wake up babe new core a gaming video it's really cool actually i think it's an interesting topic and there's a lot to expand on anyway if you go to his twitter core a gaming you'll find the video it's right there korean backdash or you can just go to his youtube if you're subscribed like everybody else on the planet so let me uh pull this bad boy up yeah it's gerald in tech yeah the new one walking backwards is slow but if you quickly tap back twice you can do a backdash which is much faster and more evasive. But dashing in Tekken is different because you can interrupt it with almost any other command before the animation finishes. But one thing I cannot do in the middle of my backdash is another backdash. I have to wait until my backdash animation finishes before doing another one. How broken would it be if I could backdash again before my previous backdash animation ended? It's pretty funny that the way he showed that and cut that, it made it look Tekken, like Korean backdash. It looks like they're doing just that. Tekken won't let you interrupt the backdash to do another backdash, but as I mentioned earlier, it will let you interrupt it with nearly any other command. One of those commands is crouch, which is just down. If you repeat this fast enough, you can repeatedly backdash faster than only tapping back. When competitive folk found out about this, they of course looked for the most efficient way to do it. I think that's one of the most interesting points in this video, by the way. It's a good explanation if you've never played Tekken before and you don't know how Korean backdash canceling works. He doesn't go too deep into that, but what I like here is he says, hey, as soon as people found this, what's the quickest, best, most uh, efficient way of doing this option or tool and that's how everything is you'll see that people have mastered this at the highest levels of play and if you watch the top players lever motions you'll notice there's a dexterity to ground this is an example of emergent gameplay where players discover a way to play that wasn't planned by the creators but maybe you feel that this is an exploit damn you know jcr by his hands yeah what you don't good old bitch magnet versus rn juices look at this sick example of this whiff punish this shows you the power of movement right like why korean backdashing is so useful the game didn't expect you to move faster than the speed but the tryhards found a way to abuse the system now everyone has to do hand gymnastics to do basic movement. Even though this is old, it's come up lately a lot, right? There's been a lot of discussion about this. But Tekken isn't the only game which has a movement exploit. Basketball has it too. When basketball was invented in 1891, James Naismith's intended rules were that the player could not run with the ball. But in 1897, the sweat lords over at Yale discovered that you could technically bounce past the ball to yourself without violating the rules. You know, these sweat lord gamers making you break your hands to do Korean backdash, and these sweat lords over at Yale figuring out how to bounce to yourself. Bunch of cheaters. This was called dribbling. <laughs> it was initially kind of busted, so they had to make additional rules so players couldn't start and stop dribbling whenever they oh, wanted. Oh, double dribble. But even after the patches, some people still wanted dribbling to be removed. These were members of the Joint Basketball Rules Committee, the then central governing body for the rules of basketball. One member is quoted saying, the rules committee believes that limitation of the dribble is a necessary step in the best <laughs> interests of basketball. They wanted to make it so you could only bounce the ball once. This is like such an absurd, like you think about this and you're like, holy shit. This limitation is for the best interests of basketball, except you've heard this before. If you think about video games, there is stuff that's been banned or stuff that people want changed or stuff that like people who are in the community are like, we need to remove this. Happens in Smash, happens about... Hitbox, everybody's got to play on GameCube controllers. It's for the best interest of Melee. That's one of the interesting things. When is it right and when is it wrong? And when does it lead to some a more interesting game or when doesn't it? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar got dunking banned from college basketball. I thought you were going to say Korean Abdul-Jabbar got Korean backdashing banned. A technique that was studied, practiced, and crafted for decades by the ones most invested in the game could be forever gone. To stop these rule makers from removing dribbling, a coach, who was also a student of James Naismith, formed the National Association of Basketball Coaches, which took part in nationwide protests. Mm -hmm. 83 years later, it's hard to imagine basketball without dribbling because people now understand that it's a large part of what makes the game exciting and unique. How you're allowed to move defines the game you're playing, and the same goes for fighting games. It's not just uh, sports or fighting games or whatever, right? But how you're allowed to move and what movement options are available are key. And removing stuff like that where you see like, they were just like, dribbling can't happen. We got to change the rules. It's got to be this way. It creates an interesting situation where you get to think a lot about what are in games or sports or whatever that has been changed or hasn't been changed or whatever. It's a really interesting conversation, I think. We're going to get into it more. Short hop, dash, wave dash, or maybe dash in the air. And maybe your game doesn't have any of that. But when you change the movement in a big way, you're changing the game in a big way. Tekken has had step canceling, dash canceling, and the Korean backdash for pretty much every version of the game, 
and it's unlike anything else I've played. It's actually one of the things that attracted me to the game. Most people who play Tekken won't know or care about the Korean Backdash because the game is designed to be enjoyed without it. But it's there for you if you want to get good. I like a few things that he says there, right? The first one was, you know, if you're engaging with the game casually, you just won't know it exists. The second thing is he says that it's unlike anything he's played and it's a big thing that he liked about Tekken. I feel that way about a lot of games. In fact, what I liked a lot about Marvel when I first picked it up was the movement. I thought the movement in that game was so satisfying. Wave dash around the ground and like create space and then like use push block to move people away from me and then use my air normals and then like wave dash under people when they're above my head. Like I thought it was like a really cool thing about the game and I like that a lot. So this video talks a lot about the philosophy of movement, right? And you know, people being frustrated by new movement techniques coming out and stuff like that. One thing that he mentions in the video is that it was it was not designed intentionally. And a lot of things in fighting games or in anything are not necessarily intentional, right? Like something gets created or something exists in the game and developers are like, huh, well, I guess they can do this thing in that way. And this happens. All right, that's interesting. And in Tekken's case, it was found and then it's been in the game ever since they just let it go, right? They're just like, all right, this is a movement technique. In the modern age, things get patched and changed and stuff all the time. And so, you know, now that they know this kind of stuff exists, they can adjust how useful it is, how far you go, how fast you are, how much your sidesteps or backdashes move certain characters. So some characters have better distance on their backdash or less distance and stuff like that. It's a design choice that they can now make around it. They could, if they wanted to, not allow you to cream backdash. They could slow that down. So make it so that regular backdashing is faster or in some other technique of backdashing works better or whatever other movement option you're doing. But they left it oh, in the game. Say right? jam fan like, oh, now. that's cool. We think that it adds something to our game more than it hurts it. You could change it. Like in Tekken 8, they could come out and just not allow that to happen or make it really easy. And uh, yeah, people are bringing up Tekken 4. But I mean, even in Tekken 7, they've changed how movement has worked a few times. But it's clearly going to have a big impact on the game. And movement and stuff like that is so important. Like stuff like instant air dashing in games, they've like added dash buttons so that, you know, when you're trying to instant air dash or you're trying to do whatever movement technique you're doing, they want to make it accessible to people as like, you know, efficiently as they can. And there's a reason that people, when they talk about fighting games and changes and stuff in games without lots of movement options, right? Walk speed is one of the biggest changes a character can get. Same thing with any game that has advanced movement options, buffing their particular movement is a huge deal. The more your character can move, the more access they have to be at the ranges they want to be to dodge things, to position themselves for what they want to do. You don't really ever realize it until you play a character with incredibly good walk speed and you just walk away from your problems. Or you play a game with incredibly good movement and you just dodge something completely. And you're like, wow, the ability to move is the most important thing. Positioning yourself on the screen without good movement takes a lot of foresight and a lot of effort and a lot of patience. When your character can just move wherever they wanna go, it doesn't take any of that. You just move to where you wanna be. You just position yourself in the right spot. And that's in a game with simple movement options. When you start to consider faster movement options right games like tekken and games like marvel games like melee and the better your movement options are which you know you yourself can grind and get better at and your character has different movement options the better you are at moving and the the quicker you are at executing and the more consistent you are the more likely it is you can do what you want to do and cover what you want to be right if your character can make it across half screen and onto a platform but some other guy whose movement is worth can only make it under the platform your options are completely different. I think that is one of the, the most interesting things about movement in Marvel games is, you know, wave dashing at someone is cool, but you just get hit sometimes, right? Moving away and escaping stuff is really the reason you want your movement to be clean because you want to not get hit by stuff. Like, have you seen someone in Marvel, like someone calls missiles and they hit someone and then they wave dash back and they just go boom, 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 boom across the screen and the missiles are like following them and whiffing. And Tekken is like that too. If you've never played a Tekken and you've tried to play a Mishima, you realize when people are good with Mishimas, they are fucking moving. These characters are back dashing nine times and then covering the whole distance in like four wave dashes and you're like, oh God. Other genres you'll notice too, where the movement is so important. One of the biggest things I realized about Rocket League is like, People can just position themselves where they want to be in the air and hit the ball from that angle. It makes it so much harder to defend a ball coming from the ceiling than it is coming from the ground. Anybody can shoot on the ground. And the same thing, when I watch people who are really good at shooting games that are really fast, one thing you notice, you're like, holy shit, the movement of the players, like their movement is absurd even in games like counter-strike which on their surface seem kind of like flat even when you see a cs player move you're just like man his movement and his pathing is so much faster or better than me 
Someone brought up kiting in, in MOBAs. Yeah, like orb walking is one of the most important things in those games. Like it is really weird to teach people, hey, you should move between your attacks. And Dota is especially weird because the turn speed is different, right? So like when you start, first start to learn Dota, that is one of the most like, whoa, things about it is that the character has to animate, like your heroes have to turn. Movement is the key to basically every genre that has moving as an option, especially advanced movement. And it's one of the hardest things to figure out because just moving fast is not always the answer. It's also moving with control. Yeah, they have to be banned. They're binding jump to their scroll wheel and mapping your controls to move better, mapping your joystick or changing how movement options work in games is really cool. And the thing that's interesting to me is that once people find this kind of stuff, especially in modern games, developers can choose to engage with it in whatever way they want. In older games, especially when you find those movement options, they're they're not going anywhere. They're just kind of, that's just the game now. Listen, did you guys see them say how tall that Resident Evil lady is, by the way? I saw that she's larger than Nemesis and Tyrant. She's gonna destroy you. Like, what are you gonna do? You're gonna walk in and she's gonna grab you by the neck and just fucking toss you around. That's how it feels to play against Johnny. I think that game is gonna be like, like, this is a Johnny fighting simulator. You walk into the room, you're like, I would like to finish this puzzle. And she just grabs you, coin, coin. You're like, please stop. Don't murder me. Yeah, I guess you guys would like it more than getting beat up by Johnny. That's true.